Okay, so we've already looked at a table of uh, values that we talked about from those special triangles. So now we're moving on to actually getting the values on the unit circle itself. Now instead of having to try and memorize the entire table or try and memorize the unit circle, I'm going to show you a way that you can actually draw this uh, by using patterns. So that way you don't have to actually remember anything on that. Now, you do have to start with, with this drawing. So if you want to generate these values, so these would be the X and the Y values, sine and cosine basically of each of these all the way through. So we're going to be able to get these two values from the unit circle. So we're not going to worry about tangent right now. We're just going to worry about the X and the Y value. So start by drawing this. We're going to do the angles that we had on our table from 0 to 90. So we're going to do 30 degrees, 45, 60, 90, and we have that. Then you're going to put coordinates next to each one just like this with commas. Now once you have all this filled out, this is now where we're going to be able to generate all these uh, by using patterns. What you're going to do for each of these is you're going to put a square root of a, of a blank over 2. And we're going to put this into each of these coordinates that we've drawn here. So we're going to do square root of blank over 2, square root of blank over 2. We're going to do that all the way through here on each of these. So we have square root of blank over 2. So we're going to do that for all of them uh, down just like that. So we're going to create that. This is the pattern that we're going to start with. So once you have square root, again this is square root of blank over 2. Here's where the pattern begins. Down here at zero in the first coordinate here for the x coordinate. We're going to go ahead and put in a four. And then we're going to go down by one all the way until we get to, the, to zero at the top. So here's four, then this is going to go down by one, so we have three, two, one, zero. Okay, so we start with four, three, two, one, zero. That's the pattern that we start with there. This one at the top, so now this one's going to start at 4, and then we're going to go down by 1 all the way until we get back to here. So we're going to go 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. If you follow that pattern, you're going to get the correct values here on the unit circle. So let's see, the, fir the first one here, that's square root of 0 over 2, that's 0. And then square root of 4 over 2, that's 2 over 2, which is 1. So this is 0, 1. This would be 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. We have these two values all the way until we get back down to this one. And if you take a look at your table, these are going to be the exact same values at these degrees. Now, how you would read a value off of a unit circle is the x value. This would be your, this is, represents cosine, and this represents sine. And that's the ca same case for all these coordinates that you have here. So for instance, if you want, let's say, sine 30 degrees, Here's 30 degrees, sine would be the y value, then we know that would be equal to 1 half. That's the same value that we had on the table. So if you follow this pattern, it allows you to be able to draw the unit circle without memorizing anything. And once you have this complete, then we have all our values. Now let's suppose you wanted to find a tangent of, let's say, 45 degrees. Well, tangent's equal to the y value over the x value, and because these are coordinates from the unit circle, we have the y value and the x value. So we can just take both of these and divide them. Or if you want, uh, you know, if you want secant, then you just take the reciprocal of cosine. You can always find find those directly uh, from here. Cosine is the first coordinate and sine is the second coordinate. So now you can get all these values. So it's great that we have all the values between zero and ninety. But what if we wanted to expand this and do the entire unit circle all the way around? So now next, I'm going to show you how we can use symmetry to get other places on uh, other values in different parts of the unit circle. Okay, so we already drew the unit circle basically just in this first quadrant, but what we want to do now is start talking about how we can get those values around other spots on the unit circle. So here's what it is we have in the first quadrant. If we have 30 degrees, at 30 degrees we get that coordinate, root 3 over 2 and 1 half. We're going to use the idea of symmetry to figure out what these values are going to have to be in the other quadrants. Because when we look at uh, this coordinate, for instance, what we notice about that, if we wanted to find this coordinate, is 
this x value is exactly the same as this x value because 30 degrees is the same distance above and same distance below so now we know that that x value is going to be the same so therefore I know now if I go down below here in the other quadrant my x value is still going to be square root of 3 over 2 now what about the y value well this is positive 1 half and then now we're going to be down below here we're the same distance above as we are below so it's going to be the same numerical value except the only difference is I'm going to have to put a negative sign there because now we know it's down below so for so because of that now we know what this angle measurement is here and if we're if this is uh, if we go 360 degrees all the way around and we're 30 degrees less than that that means that now we would know the exact values for 330 degrees so now we can kind of expand what values we know. Let's take a look at this one. So this other one over here, if we want to get the coordinate for that one, now this, it has same distance away this way and same distance that way, so we're going to have square root of 3 over 2, but because we're on the other quadrant, it's going to be negative square root of 3 over 2. But the y values, they're exactly the same, so that's still going to be equal to uh, 1 half. Likewise, down here, we can do the same argument there. Okay, so that again, square root of 3 over 2 here, this is going to be negative square root of 3 over 2 because we're on the negative x-axis there. And then the y values are going to be exactly the same here and here. We're at the same level, so that's going to also be at negative 1 half. So this is the basic idea for using symmetry. So this is how you would do it for 30 degrees. I'm just going to go ahead and show you the circles for 45 degrees and 60 because they work the same way. So that's what we'll take a look at next. But I just wanted to show you exactly how these are being computed. You're just looking at the x values, what quadrant they're in, and you're just making sun adjustments. But notice because we're using 30 for all of these, that's why the numerical value ends up being the same. So if you take that same logic that we talked about with the 30 degrees and we apply it to 45 and 60, Again, we're using symmetry on each of these as well. So this one starts at root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2. Again, we see the same thing happening as before. Same y values, but different x values differ by a sign. These have the same x value differ by a sign. Same idea here with the 60 degrees. So we're just taking all of our values between 0 and 90, and we're using symmetry to see where they appear in other quadrants. So, if you do all that, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a unit circle. Now, I have a unit circle that's in the notes here, and I'm not going to redraw it on the board uh, for you because you have it in your notes, but I just wanted to show you where all the values on the unit circle come from. They basically come from uh, doing this symmetry idea, and you can create the entire thing. So, actually, you could draw this entire thing even without using memorization because if you know how to draw them again in the first quadrant there between 0 and 90, then you can just generate them for, for all of them. Then you have it in all the uh, different quadrants. So assuming that you have a unit circle sitting in front of you, we're now going to answer uh, the next question, which asks you to look at a value on the unit circle and get exact values for all six trig functions. Okay, so now that we've drawn and talked about the unit circle, again, there's a copy of that uh, in your notes. Also, if you go to the notes page on my website, at the very top, it'll say unit circle handout. So you can get a big, big one uh, with that. Uh, it says use that to evaluate the six trig functions of the real number t equals 2 pi over 3. So they're saying look at the angle of 2 pi over 3 on the unit circle and get it. So uh, for something like this, for instance, 2 pi over 3 is going to be in the upper left hand corner, it'll be the second quadrant. So 2 pi over 3, this is the coordinate that you get there. So uh, for 2 pi over 3, here's a coordinate that we're at. We're at negative 1 half and square root of 3 over 2. So that's the particular point that we're at. So we want to use this coordinate to get all six trig functions. Well, let's first start with uh, sine and cosine. We can get those easily because those come directly from the coordinate that we have here. So uh, for this, we have 2 pi over 3. Uh, is the angle we already got. The first coordinate is cosine, second coordinate is sine. So for sine 2 pi over 3, we can just get that directly from the coordinate root 3 over 2. Cosine 2 pi over 3 is going to be negative 1 half. We can get that directly. We can get tangent also. 
So tangent 2 pi over 3 is the y value over the x value. So we can do square root of 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. Flip and multiply, so we get square root of 3 over 2 times reciprocal negative 2 over 1, and you're going to get negative square root of 3 for the answer there. Now what we can also do is we can come up with cosecant 2 pi over 3 and secant 2 pi over 3 and cotangent 2 pi over 3. We can get all those because we can just take the reciprocals of what we found already. So for cosecant, we just flip that 2 over radical 3 and that's going to be 2 radical 3 over 3 if we uh, flip and uh, we rationalize it. For secant 2 pi over 3, just going to be the reciprocal of cosine, it's going to be negative 2. And then for cotangent 2 pi over 3, it's the reciprocal of negative square root of 3, so that's negative 1 over root 3 if we take the reciprocal. Don't forget about the sign that we got there. And if you rationalize it, you get negative root 3 over 3, and that would be the exact value. So if you have a unit circle, really all you need is just the first coordinate from there. And this is actually how, in fact, you would find all the exact values if you have a unit circle. Just start with the one coordinate that you get. Go to the angle 2 pi over 3 and see what the coordinate is. And then you can get all the other values by using the definitions for all six trig functions.